Hello everyone and a massive welcome or welcome back to Fallout Play Build Collect. In the last video I unboxed Wasteland Warfare from Modiphius and in this video we're going to take a close up look at the fantastic miniatures that come with that set. Let's start off with the star of the show and we have Nora, the female vault dweller. They don't have the male character in this, you're just limited to the female version. She's in a vault suit and she has the light leather armour and is equipped here firing a 10mm pistol. I think the likeness on the character is very good. These miniatures are all in PVC plastic. And you can see here the rifle has slight bendage to it. Now there is a simple way that you can straighten these and if you want to know that leave me a comment down below and I'll do a video on how you straighten these PVC miniatures. It's quite simple. Overall, I think this is a really nice action pose. We can see some nice detailing. Even the pit boy there is well represented on the arm. And I think we're off to a good start. Next up here, we have Aspirant Goddard. He's our brother of the steel character. And we can see here again, the power armor is very, very well detailed. It's nicely proportioned. See up close, detailing is very, very good, especially for this PVC plastic. You can see here he's equipped with a laser rifle with a red dot sight and I think this is quite nicely represented obviously it's a very difficult model to do at this scale with the small bar at the bottom but I think this is a nice compromise I think it comes out quite nicely let me know what you guys think though as always something else to note here is these miniatures come pre-assembled on these bases and the bases are textured and do fit the game you can see here the character is stepping off of a sidewalk into the road if we pay attention to the character's leg here, we can see a very clear seam line. If you're new to tabletop miniatures, this is something that's absolutely normal, quite common. But of course, this seam line will need to be cleaned up before painting. Now we move to dog meat. This is a fairly simple model to do and they've represented him quite nicely, I think. Once again, on a scenic base, there's some nice detail in there on the base. You can see there's actually a Nuka Cola bottle sitting next to him. It's nice that Modiphius have managed to fit in these small little things that add a little bit of character to the model and just place them in the Fallout universe. So there he is, he's everybody's favourite, it's dog meat. This is our first generic settler model. This one's equipped with a pipe pistol, and I think that's a stim pack in his left hand. Really nice touch when we look at the base of this one is we can actually see the ploughed field lines and some plant remnants. You only ever really see these type of characters on settlements, and I think putting that on the base is a nice touch. This settler outfit is obviously very common in the game, and I think it's represented very well here from Modiphius. Once again, we have another generic settler, again in an outfit that's absolutely accurate to the game. And judging by the type of scope and the magazine, I think this is intended to be a pipe rifle. And on the base of this one, we have what looks to be a wooden floor piece. And there's the nice touch of having the oil lamp knocked over on the side. Again, a lovely little touch just to add a little bit of flavour to this one. Next up, we have the Enslaved Tech Survivor. And I must say, I found this to be a very curious inclusion to this set. But I'll go into that in the next video where we do the full review of the starter set. As for the figure itself, it's quite adequate. We have the double barreled shotgun and an adjustable wrench there on his hip. Now we move to the Super Mutant Faction, and you'll notice all of these miniatures from this faction are in this light green colour. That's nice to distinguish them from the Settler Faction, if you don't intend to paint your miniatures. And this is quite a nice rendition of a Super Mutant Hound, but it does need to be noted that the mould lines on this one are considerably more prominent than they seem to be on any of the human figures. Now we have a second Super Mutant Hound, the mould lines don't seem to be quite so much of a problem on this one. I would suspect that perhaps that's down to the fact that this is a slightly less dynamic pose. I should note on the base on this one was very much out of shape. That can be corrected, but it did appear to have some kind of divot taken out of the front or some kind of deformity. Next we have what's listed as the standard Super Mutant. He's armed with a high-end pipe rifle. This one with a drum magazine. They've done a nice job here of moulding the fins on the barrel, the compensator, and the recoil stock. These super mutants are really nice large figures, and the armour, the weapons, the look of the figure, even the bases, they're all very accurate to the game. Next up we have the super mutant brute. 
And once again, it's a lovely large figure, very well detailed. The armor, the helmet, it's all very nicely modeled and true scaled. You can see this super mutant's equipped with a sledgehammer. Once again, this character has a bent weapon. But as I said earlier, it's quite a simple fix. And if you'd like to know how to do that, just let me know in the comments. Move on now to the super mutant aviator. So named, of course, because he wears that aviator helmet that so many of them wear. This one's dual wielding pipe pistols. I found that to be a bit curious. I don't remember anybody in the game dual wielding. If I'm wrong, feel free to correct me. But of course, I think maybe the rule of call just comes in here. I really like this miniature. He tends to be my leader whenever I play Super Mutants. I really like the skull trophies around him. And overall, I think this is a really cool mini. Now for something completely different. This miniature was listed as a special added bonus miniature, and it's the Zetan Alien. Now, of course, it's quite possible you may have completed Fallout 3 and Fallout 4 and never have encountered this particular creature. And if you haven't, you're missing out because this was one of the favourite little Easter eggs they put in Fallout 4. You discover one of these sinister little aliens in a crash ship, and it's a great moment, it really is. This figure has his fully modified ray gun, and I think this was a really lovely little extra inclusion in the set. And last, but by no means least, we have the Death Claw. This is a very big figure to include in a starter set. And being a larger figure, it's clearly multi-part. And you can see that here where you have some gaps where the head and the arm has been attached. Overall, I think the detail on this figure is excellent. It's a really impressive piece. Now, once again, I have the minor problem that you can see here is scales on his back were slightly bent. Now, I know Modifius were aware of the problem and I do believe they may have corrected this problem in some of the later sets. I have had this set for some time, so if you've got a more recent set and this wasn't an issue, let us know in the comments below. Once again, I might question the choice of including this figure in a starter set tactically, but I can understand why they did because it is such a cool figure. To sum things up, I have to say I think this is a wonderful little collection of figures, and I think the decision to use PVC plastic was an excellent one. It keeps the cost of the set down for new people coming into the hobby, and overall, I think this PVC has done a really good job. It captures the detail really well. And overall, I think PVC figures are very unfairly criticized. But that's just my opinion. I'd love to know what you guys think. Get down in the comments below. Let me know, are you a newcomer to the game? Are you a newcomer to the hobby in general? Or are you a veteran tabletop gamer and you wasn't happy with these figures? Or did you really love them straight out of the box? Let me know the feedback you have on this game in general, whether you're a veteran gamer or someone just getting into the hobby, I really want to hear from you. Just before you go, I have to say a massive thank you to everybody who supports the channel, whether over on Buy Me A Coffee or Patreon. I can't do this without you guys and your support is enormously appreciated. And you can now directly support the channel here on YouTube with Superfans. And of course you can always support the channel for free just by hitting the like and subscribe button. And as always, take care of yourselves and each other. And I hope to see you in another video very soon. Thanks for watching.